Amen. Thank you, Sister Kezia. And good morning, everyone. Wonderful season of prayer and also a wonderful study uh, this morning about the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. I pray that we have all been blessed. And before we go to the next session, I would like us to, to sing hymn number 537, He Leadeth Me. 537, on SDA hymno, He Leadeth Me. And it has four stanzas. Who would like to take the first one, please? He leadeth me, 537. I know that most of you are a bit tired and a bit sleepy. I'll take uh, one. Thank you. Thank you very much. But God is good. May he give all of you strength, uh, those who are dedicated your time to pray last night. And um, who would like to take the second one, please? We'll take the second. Thank you. Uh, Takli Trins, the third one. Anyone to take the third stanza? We'll take it. Thank you, uh, Sister Hope and Sister Phoebe. And the fourth one, please. Okay, I'll take the, the fourth one. We may start. Can't hear you. Oh, sorry, I was muted. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still it is God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest blue, sometimes where Eden's flowers bloom, by water still or troubled sea, still tis his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp my hand in me, not ever man, nor repent. Content, whatever, Lord, I see, since this my God leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, 
by his own hand he leaded me. His faithful forward for by his hand he leaded me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory's won, in death God way by will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leaded me. His faithful follower I will be. For by his hand he leaded me. Amen. Thank you, everyone, Amen. for the beautiful singing. Amen. Amen. Go through Jordan, he leadeth me. So God leads us. We have nothing to fear. He is with us. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom. God loves us. He we'll wants us to be next, next week. Wonderful. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your love for us and leading us by your Holy Spirit, taking us by your hand and leading us through Jordan. We pray that you will be with us this morning as we look into your word, the spirit of prophecy, which is you have given us to prepare us for your soon return and to shed light onto your, your word, the Bible. Help us to gain understanding and give us wisdom and help us to guard the avenues of our souls that we may be found ready when you come. May your Holy Spirit guide each and every word spoken here. Help us not to bring our own opinions and uh, our own understanding into your word, but open our eyes and help us to learn and unlearn. Sometimes we have held different understandings and we pray that when we read something that is written, uh, that you have shed light on it, that we will be able to accept that which is true according to the Bible. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Welcome again to this morning's study, the book Desire of Ages. And we are reading chapter 33, titled, Who Are? my brethren who are my brethren so as we continue to study may god search our hearts may we um may we gain understanding of what we need to understand about the work which christ came to do and that we may put it into practice may god help us so that we do not reject the truth with our own understanding and our own reasoning to understand and obey the word of God as is written is life, to disobey it is death. So may the Lord be with us as we study. Uh, yesterday, we, we stopped at Sorry, I'm just scrolling to see where, where we are. We are starting the paragraph which starts with when the soul surrenders itself. But before we can go into that paragraph, 
yesterday we saw how when Christ casts out demons and uh, from many souls, they the words of Christ fell onto a stony ground. And these were the stony ground hearers. Uh, you remember the parable in the Bible about the seed which is planted. If it falls on fertile ground, it produces fruit. But sometimes the words of Christ fall into our hearts and our characters testify that we could be some of these um, whose words of Christ fell on to, you know, dry ground and stony ground. It's a very, very fearful thing to be listening to the word of God. And it doesn't seem to be doing very much for us. May the Lord have mercy and may he begin with me that I will not be only a hearer, but also the doer of God's word. Okay, we can start a new reading, but before we go there, does anyone have anything that they may not have said in those paragraphs? Um, and the, the Christ how loving he is, adding warnings to those who had been impressed by his words. God always does nothing. He wants us. He, he says things to us. He repeats them for our own understanding so that we can be sanctified through his truth, his word. Any thoughts on those two paragraphs we read yesterday? Any thoughts? Or anything that stood out that you felt I am taking this away? All right, I cannot see any hands. In that case, we shall continue with the reading uh, from when the soul surrenders itself. Would anyone like to volunteer to read? That paragraph is a long paragraph. I would, if someone wants to volunteer to read, please go ahead. When the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the heart and of the of the new heart. A change is wrought which man can never accomplish for himself. It is a supernatural work, bringing a supernatural element into a human nature. The soul that is yielded to Christ becomes his own fortress, which he holds in a revolt, in a revolted world, and he intends that no authority shall be known in it but his own. A soul that is kept in possession by the heavenly agencies is impregnable to the assaults of Satan, but unless we do yield ourselves to the control of Christ, we shall be dominated by the wicked one. We must inevitably be under the control of the one or the other of the two great powers that are contending for supremacy of the world. It is not necessary for us to deliver, deliver, deliberate to choose to, to deliberately choose the service of the kingdom of darkness in order to become under the, its dominion. We only have to neglect to ally ourselves with the kingdom of light. If we do not cooperate with the heavenly agencies, Satan will take possession of the heart and will make his abiding place. The only defence against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith in his righteousness. Unless we become vitally connected with God, we can never resist the unhallowed effect of self-love, self-indulgence and temptation to sin. We may leave off back many bad habits for the time we may part company with satan but without a vital connection with god through the surrender of ourselves to him moment by moment we shall be overcome without a personal acquaintance with christ and a continual communion we are at the mercy of the enemy and shall do his bidding in the end thank you very much um, tackley prince for that beautiful reading Yes, 
that's a long chapter. There is a lot there. When the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the heart. So we become Christ's new creation and a change is wrought with which man can never accomplish for himself. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's Christ who does this work in our hearts. And she goes on to say it is a supernatural work, bringing a supernatural element into the human nature. Our nature is sinful, but Christ said to Nicodemus, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless a man is born of water and the spirit, they cannot see the kingdom of God. We can never save ourselves. The soul that is yielded to Christ becomes his own fortress. Someone said yesterday that our hearts, they, you know, we are how we are house. We can either be possessed by the Holy Spirit or possessed by the spirit of Satan. It is a house that we should guard. Just a quick question. If we have our house and it's clean and you've just mopped the floor, <laughs> some of us have got floors where you mop. And after you just mopped and cleaned, somebody comes from outside with muddy shoes. How do you feel if that somebody walks into your house with muddy, <laughs> with mud on their feet and walks and, uh, and, and they don't, they are not aware that you have spent time, you have cleaned the house and then it's clean, it's made dirty again. It's not very pleasant. It's not the best uh, um, uh, analogy for me to use, but it just came to my mind that when Christ cleans our hearts, we sometimes are like donkeys. We go and mark in the mud and then we come out dirty again. and. Christ wants us to allow him to be to be uh, at the seat of our hearts so that we can he can dwell in us and so that we can give him the permission for the supernatural work to be wrought if we don't do that then we um we we are giving the enemy way into the avenues of our souls. Uh, Sister Kezia, and then uh, Tackley Twins, please. Yes, thank you, Sister Dorothy, and good morning, everybody on the platform. Yes, my, my uh, mind, I was captured by this. Uh, it's a fearful thought, actually, this paragraph. Sometimes when we talk about it, without actually have read it, you know, um, you think, oh, maybe there is a, another way. <laughs> it says here, we must inevitably be under the control of the one or the other of two great powers that are contending for supremacy of the world. It is not necessary for us deliberately to choose the service of the kingdom of darkness in order to come under its dominion. We only we have only to neglect to ally ourselves with the kingdom of light. If we do not control with the heavenly agents, Saturn will take up possession of the heart and will make it his abiding place. That's a really fearful thought. That if, I mean, who would want to choose death really to say, I want to, to yeah, there are some people who have, you know, those whom we know they've sold their souls to say, I've sold my soul to the devil. Um, and I will do his biddings as long as I get the money which he's promised me, which is uh, flooding me with. That, they, they have made that choice. What about those who neglect you know, deliberately, just only neglecting to ally yourself with Christ. There, you know, that is a very fearful thought because there are a lot of uh, people who say, "I do, I, I don't, I don't do anything against anyone. I'm a good person. I, I give arms wherever necessary. I don't, I don't do anything." 
um, which is bad. So I don't even see the need to to call upon your Christ because I don't do anything bad. And sadly, this 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 group of people also is aligned. You know, um, a, a Satan takes possession of that heart, just neglecting even ourselves. Ne when we neglect a uh, prayer in our lives, we ne when we neglect to do what is right before God, or even negligence of any duties, you know, we then uh, we are we are we a certain takes possession of that. Uh, it is quite a fearful thought. And there was, when yesterday, when uh, Elder Renshaw was was giving us the final word that even you know the mixed multitude in the church. These are the the mixed multitude in the church. Are we the mixed multitude in the church who who are just there, but we have not aligned ourselves to the kingdom of light, and the and Satan is actually using us to do his biddings and he's residing in our hearts. It's a very fearful thought. I pray that uh, we, each one of us, uh, ask God to teach us to submit no matter whatever thought. Lord, please take control of this thought. Whatever action, Lord, to be guided, to submit everything to Christ. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sister Kezia. You're quite right. It's a very fearful thought. We have to commit everything to Christ. Yep. This is the work. This paragraph um, is warning us, is telling us the danger of just giving just a little bit of opportunity for Satan to come into our hearts. Just neglect, just one neglect of God's light, God's commandments. If we do not cooperate with the heavenly agencies, Satan will take possession of the heart. That's why we are told to guard the avenues of our hearts. It's in the heart. This is a heart work here that she's talking about what do we allow into our hearts what do we allow to see what do we allow to hear where do we allow ourselves to go who do we company with do all those things that we do on a daily basis bring glory to god and do they do any good to our souls we sold our souls to satan we don't have to be the Hollywood musicians or the Hollywood actors who engage in, in all the filthiness and yielding to Satan. We don't have to be. Some of us are worse because we know the truth, but we don't do very much with it. It's very fearful, actually, to be a Seventh-day Adventist. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel afraid. Because, you know why I feel afraid? Because there is no excuse for a Seventh-day Adventist. We don't have any excuse not to obey God. Because we have all the truth. <laughs> written for us in the Bible. And then light, spirit of prophecy, shedding light to it so that we can allow God to live in our hearts so that we can be changed. We can be born of the spirit of God. It's just what it is. Unless a man is born of water and the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We are not going anywhere. We need the Lord. People need the Lord. 
Kathleen Twins, please go ahead and then send this out. Yes, good morning. We've actually seen um, uh, it in action where, where people have uh, come to Christ. Remember when we went to Moldova, we was, we was doing prison ministries and some of these men in the prison, they've done really terrible crimes, but I think it was a retired minister that went in and witnessed to them. And as we went in, we could see the men in the suits and that. I think I said this before, but it's worth saying again. Yeah. We could see <laughs> the men in the suits, you know, and there was deacons and it's like a church. You know, Adventist. Adventist, yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, and they showed you to your seat and everything, and um, you know, it's really a it was really a grotty a place. It, it was, was a grotty, grotty place. It was absolutely awful the place, but and um, life's was, life there. Yeah, but um, God's light was shining there. You know, there was it was there must have been about um, quite a few men that were in the suits and that mm. who had been converted to the truth. Yeah, because you normally go it's t-shirt and and jogging bottoms. That's what you normally see in a prison. Yeah. But, you know, we were surprised. <laughs> it was a nice surprise as well. Mm -hmm. So God can change lives. And we pray yeah. that, um, that it'll change your life for this boy. He was, he's about 15 and life is life over there. And um, anyway, that he, 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 did did, he did a prank at school and it went wrong. And um, somebody, he got died. Put in, somebody died and he got put in prison. And it is life. So... They, they, they sort of put, they put him in with these men and we we, we, they took him we pray wing, yeah, yeah okay. we're praying that he will be converted so he's got hope you know uh, mm. it, with his love because you'll never get a hope and it's such a young age to be incarcerated for all your love you know mm. <laughs> yep so they surrendered to Christ and a supernatural work was wrought in their hearts and they are born again, and they are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amazing love, amazing grace. Thank you for that testimony. Every time you give it, I feel like it's like a fresh. It's, uh, it doesn't even feel like an old testimony, something that uh, you witnessed. And it is um, it's just amazing to see what the Spirit of God can do and does in people's hearts. And... It reminds me of that song where it goes and somewhere it says, the blood of Jesus Christ can make the vilest sinner clean. Mm. You said that they committed terrible crimes. You know, death, murderers, some of them, them they were probably pedophiles and had been convicted for so many crimes. But look what the, what the Spirit of God is capable of doing in a sinner's heart. You know, this, these sinners, they are more, they love Jesus more because they know that they have been forgiven much. And you will find that most people who are committed to Christ and have fully surrendered their hearts to Christ, they are people who lived very sinful life and they surrendered to Christ and they decided to follow Jesus and they are very influential speakers. They are very hardworking people because they know they have been forgiven much and they want to love Christ more. They want, not more than he loved them, but they want to serve Christ with everything. They are throwing everything. They have surrendered. I. This reminds me of a pastor who, uh, Pastor Benson, um, is the is the director of Fiwago Orphanage in Nakuri in Kenya. This pastor was an orphan and he was he was uh, he was adopted by very good parents and he had prayed that if he if he gives him parents who will adopt him, he will adopt I think he said one child or two children. And that is exactly what he did. When he was adopted and he was old enough, he adopted a child or two children. And his ministry grew from one or two children to over 300 children. This orphanage is led by God. It's one of the best I have ever seen in Kenya and I haven't seen any other that can compare. It is sponsored by people 
and the, it's a school. There's a school there, and he's got um, work there of printing the present truth. He's got prison ministry. He goes from town to town in Kenya, and his work also extends to Tanzania. He goes there and does this work. Amazing. You know, when you see people who fear God and they honor God, they inspire me. So we should be inspired by people who are fully committed to Christ. I'm just saying that to encourage us to know that if we really, really, really want, if we really want to surrender our lives to Christ, Christ can use us in a very big way. God is able to use us. Look at the way he used Apostle Paul. You know, he said, I am the chief of sinners because he knows what he was doing, the stoning of Stephen and all that. And look at how God used him. He became an apostle to the Gentiles and he was going from place to place, preaching the gospel, being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Apostle Paul is one I want to see. When I go to heaven, I want to see Jesus, but Apostle Paul, I just want to see him and have a word with him so that he can at least tell me and I can look at him and and, and just see how God has, how he allowed himself and how he managed to be so heavily persecuted, yet he never gave up the faith and the service in Jesus. Such powerful men of God who surrendered all. Thank you. Our son desire. Um, I've got to say this because of the men's love changes, some yes. of the families have been converted as well. You see? Amazing. Isn't that wonderful? They've seen that that cannot be just, it cannot be man who did that in their hearts. They are convinced that it's got to be God's power that has changed their, you know, their family, the, the ones who were convicted. And that change causes people to want also to try this Jesus who is able to change me. So wonderful. And God does it to his own glory. Thank you so much. And uh, Sister Kezia and Son Desire, please go ahead. Oh, sorry, mine is an old hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Son Desire, please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you. Good morning again. Uh, thank you for those powerful comments. Um, I just wanted to to go back to to that reading again and just uh, um, read that paragraph again. So I got two two points I wanted to make there. Uh, the first, the very first line was saying, uh, um, it was saying something uh, very key. It says, when the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the new heart. Now, so one thing that here uh, we need to, to take away from the inspired writings, uh, there's a condition that precedes this new power taking control of the heart. And that is surrender but you see we talk a lot about this uh, maybe yesterday we touched on it um, but I wonder if we all understand what in, what it entails because I think it's so serious it's so important you know how many times we pray for the for this power we're praying for the Holy Ghost this is the power that we're praying for this is uh, what uh, she continues to say, that this power is supernatural. You know, it's nothing of our own. It's wholly from without. But there's a condition that has to take place, and that condition is surrender. But I wonder if we all understand what that surrender is. It's, you know, we use... Uh, 
these words, they're quite common. But I wonder whether we, because if it's so key, then I think it's important that we, we fully understand also um, what God is asking of us. Because sometimes when you just hear surrender, surrender, die to mm -hmm. self, die to self, yield, what do we actually mean? In a practical way. Or maybe citing some examples in the Bible. Because I think these are important lessons, you know. And Satan knows that God's people are, are ignorant. Or sometimes we know too much theory. And he's happy for us to have a lot of theory. Because he's afraid. Satan knows as soon as that person surrenders God's way or the Bible's way, he knows he has lost control over that person. So he's going to do everything to miss, to make us misunderstand what that means or what that entails, because that is key in order to get the new power or the supernatural power that God wants to bestow in the human, uh, in the human frame or uh, in a person. So, 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 so this is just a question that I'm, I'm putting it out there. Um, I say that it's it, it's very key because I think if you notice towards the end of that paragraph, we shall have to be dominated with either one power or the other. And, and it's sad. I think it's going to be terribly sad for many of God's people who have not known any other service than the service of God to be at last possessed by demons because they neglect it. And I think one point that we can start to neglect is uh, uh, being indifferent towards what actually surrender means. Because if we neglect the understanding of what that means, I think that is the first point where we can actually start to lose. Uh, uh, because I, I think, well, to me, I don't know, but I think this paragraph, I mean, even if we had this paragraph only to study, that would be enough to, to occupy our our thoughts and our contemplation, I think. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, are you finished and desire or you Yeah, it's a question. Uh, I wanted to, to just you know, because this is what she's saying when the soul surrenders itself to Christ. So this is just a question mm -hmm. as to what does actually that look, what does it look like uh, in a practical way? Or maybe if we all understand what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a question for everyone. Any any thoughts on that? You know, the, what the sentence starts with, when the soul surrenders itself to Christ, you know, when the sentence starts with when, then it means something else is going to take place after that. It's suggesting to me that unless we surrender ourselves, the, um, the new power take possession of the new heart. So we have that choice of surrender. Surrendering here, Things that we love to do that are not in harmony with heaven. 
to me, my understanding is that if there are things that I used to love to do, if there are sins that I in, indulge myself in, I cannot receive this power. I cannot have this power indwelling spirit of Christ working in me to bring a supernatural uh, result in my heart. And it is an individual work, surrender. We sing the song, I surrender all. When I sing that song, I sing it with, uh, with fear because I'm saying, I surrender. I'm saying, I surrender. And then I go back to repeat the same bad habits and I'm not listening to the word of God. I'm not reading it. I'm not attending any prayers. I'm not praying. I'm just leaving, hoping things will be okay. I don't think that's what he's saying here. It's like, uh, you know, when a criminal is caught by the police, they are caught committing a crime. They put their hands up, like to acknowledge that you've caught me now. Mm -hmm. they, they surrender. They put their hands to say, now you are in control because you've caught me sin, uh, committing a crime. And I wonder whether we do put our hands up and say, Lord, I've messed up. Putting our hands up, I've messed up. Save me, take me, mold me, make me. You are the porter, I am the clay. Do we give God permission to be the porter, to mold this clay? which is born in sin, has got tendencies to sin. Um, okay, I have as Sister Martha, please go ahead, and then Sister Matanga. Thank you, and good morning. That's an interesting question on what surrender looks like. Um, I'll attempt to answer it from what is written here in Desire of Ages. Here she says, we may live off many bad habits. I mean, we can give up so many things and, and touch with Satan, she says, but without a vital connection with God, which is obtained through surrender, we, we shall be overcome. I mean, I think of the of the Jews, I mean, they had over 600 laws on how to keep, on how to please God, but they were still found short. I mean, when Jesus came, he was telling the multitudes that if their righteousness did not exceed that of the Pharisees, they would not see the kingdom. And the people were surprised because, I mean, the Jews were doing so many things. I think it's a hard thing it's not so much as I don't do this, I don't do that, I will do this, I will do that. But without giving our hearts a full giving up of our hearts to God, that we won't be able to be surrendering. This reminds me of the quotation in Christ Object Lessons, where she says, Lord, take my heart, for I'm not capable of giving it. And uh, it's a cry for really God to take control. It's not what I do, but it's what God can do. What we need to have is to have a deep acknowledgement of our need of God to take our hearts and to guide us. Then he will show us how to surrender. Then when we have that vital connection, then surrender may become a reality in our lives. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Sister Martha. That is so powerful. Take my heart and keep it, for I cannot keep it. We can't do it on our own. We cannot. So it's only Christ we should cling to. It's only Christ who can give us that power. Okay. Uh, I have Sister... Sister Matanza, please go ahead. 
Yes, uh, thank you. Yes, um, I, uh, the question posed by uh, Sun Desire there is very important because I think I think it is the key to everything really on on the Christian walk. Um, if we look in the Bible, um, we we see the total surrender. The, we can only study some characters where you see that there was a total surrender to Christ and see then what they did after that. I, like, you know, the woman who was caught in adultery. I think in, in, in the commentary or somewhere it says that uh, she's this, I think she's the one who was is actually Mary Magdalene, who was then found. Um, she's the first one who went to the resurrection in the resurrection morning. Went to the tomb, and Jesus uh, saw Jesus. She had completely uh, changed her lifestyle completely, and she loved Jesus for His forgive what. She, Jesus had done for her. She understood. She she could relate the the burden which Christ had taken away from her to be forgiven. Therefore, she she surrendered completely and turned around. Uh, interesting that last yesterday our pastor was giving a, an example of a man who who used who went to a to a pub and bought a, a pint of beer and after he had bought that pint of beer he threw that beer in the face of the bartender <clears throat> and the bartender said what have you done? What have you done? And and you are saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I am really, really, really so sorry. Please forgive me. Please, please forgive me. I will make sure that I don't know what, what happened to me. I will go to a psychiatrist and get an assessment and whatever. And <clears throat> he did go to the psychiatrist and get some sessions. And after some time again, he came back to the pub and the bartender noticed him and said, um, I'm not going to save you a, a, a pint of beer because you will throw it in my face. So he says, no, 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 no. Believe me, I'm not going to do that at all. No, because I I attended the sessions and, and I know <clears throat> that I'm not supposed to do that and Believe me, and he looked at him and said, are you sure you're not going to do what you did last time? He says, no, I'm not. And then he sold him the, the pint of beer and immediately threw it in his face. And the bartender said, but, but you, you promised that you were not going to do this. He says, yeah, I'm not going to do it because I, I attended the sessions and I was forgiven for what I did. So now I can continue, I can do what I want in, you know, my heart feels that I need to throw the spear in you. That so it's it's something which is in the heart, which we need to give up. It's not the it's it's something which is in that those things which we love to do so much that we, it takes control of everything. Like if you talk to a, a football fan to say, today let's go to church when there's a match and he's got tickets, you say, oh no, I can't, I can't, oh, what do you mean? I can't go to church with you today because I've got a football match. But when he's now sold and understand what Christ has done for him and loves Christ, those tickets will mean nothing. They, they will not, the change of the heart would have come. Those tickets, but he has to give up uh, those
those tickets who say, I'm not going to go because I understand what Christ has done for me. So I would rather go there than, than go here. So, so that's what I wanted to sort of like uh, put um, as an explanation of, you know, that total surrender. It has to be, it's a heart issue. Thank you. Amen. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Thank you for that, Sister Kezia. And we can only do that by the grace of God. But then we have a choice to make. When the soul surrenders itself, that means I have to, to initiate that surrender after conviction. I initiate that surrender. Some desire. I don't know whether that whether you have received many answers from the comments or whether you have something that you want to share. You've also put something on the chat. If you want to share mm -hmm. that and perhaps maybe read and then, yeah, so that we can really understand what it means to surrender. Please go ahead. Amen. Thank you for those, uh, for sharing your thoughts and so the, the thoughts that were shared as well by Sister Matan Mother Kesika. I mean, um, it, it's it's such a, a a key issue, I believe, as uh, we have uh, heard from the those responses. I'm just adding to what they've already said. Um, you see, Sister White has spoken about this issue in many other places in a different way, and uh, that quotation I shared there is just one another place that she talks again about this same issue. Because there's no other way um, we are going to experience the power of God. Mm -hmm. um, now, in this quotation, uh, which is again from this book, The Seven of Ages, another chapter, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled, she says here, there are many who believe and profess to claim the Lord's promise. They talk about Christ and about the Holy Spirit yet receive no benefit. Now, here is the reason why, she says, they do not surrender the soul to be guided and controlled by divine agencies. She says, we cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is to use us. Through the Spirit, God works in his people to will and to do of his good pleasure. But many will not submit to this. We're going to come to, this is where many, you know the text says many are in the valley of decision. This is where many are. Uh, many we are here, God's, God's people, but many will not submit to this. So another word for submit, uh, for surrender is submit or yield. Yeah. It says, but many will not submit to this. Why? They want to manage themselves. Yes. And here is where I wanted to emphasize. Surrender is yielding up, relinquishing control. Many of us, of us, we want to control. We want to be in control. We want to be in control for our finances. We want to be in control for our families. We want to, we feel at ease when we feel that we have control over what's happening in our lives, where we want to live, where we want to travel, the people we want to hang around with, where we want to do evangelism. Even when it comes to spiritual things, we want to have control. Who should speak to us? Mm -hmm. Now, you gave an illustration earlier, Mother, that you know, in even in 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 warfare, right now there's Ukraine and Russia. Every so often, you know, when other soldiers are caught off guard, they surrender. What that surrender means is that the other soldier soldiers, they have to raise a white flag, raise up their hands in the air, throw their guns down. What they are simply saying is that we, we are helpless. Have mercy on us. 
We don't trust in what we have. We are at your mercy. Now, this is, now, in spiritual terms, when a soul surrenders, now, in the Bible, we have uh, situations like this, like Elisha, when he was called to ministry. Remember what he did? He killed all his oxen that he was using. He was a farmer. He broke the yokes and he made fire with them. He killed all the oxen. People ate them. I mean, the man is saying, here I am, Lord. I'm no longer a farmer. Use me. What would thou have me to do? The disciples, their occupation was fishing. What did they do? They left their nets and they followed him. Mm -hmm. They had families. They had wives. Peter had, he had, he had a family. Some of them were young people. But they had families. This is where they were getting their means. Their bread and butter. But how come they choose to follow uh, this rabbi who said he had no house? Mm -hmm. This is, we, we, we read about it, but I wonder whether we think that is still the same condition now because the conditions of being a disciple have not changed. So now the question is, how many of us now are willing to make themselves vulnerable? Because we want control. You see. I want to make sure that you know my bills are paid every month. So this is why God can't use me because I can't, I'm not movable. I want God to use me in my own terms. God sent me in my local town because at least I can do one hour, come back, go to work. So this is very key, brother, what we're reading. I, I wonder if we, we realize one of the key reasons. Well, why should God give us the Holy Spirit? if we are not ready to give up our jobs. Not to say everybody has to give up their jobs, but if you think you, you are satisfied, one thing that I think in the mind, before you give up anything physically, you have to say in your mind, God, you will take care of me. Whether I have this job, or whether I don't have this job, whether I have this house or I don't have this house, whether I have this person or I don't have this person, God, you are God. We have to put God in this place and say, I'm telling this to myself as well. God needs to be God. If God can speak things into existence, he can speak things into existence. Literal, he can take care of our needs. The mind has to be yielded first before we we'll, we might not necessarily have to leave our jobs, but is your mind ready that when God calls, nothing is going to be between? So 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 this is this is what I was just thinking there that a, a lot of us were in this valley. We still want to manage ourselves, and unless we allow God to manage our situations, our finances our everything, our families, then we're not ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. We are not ready to receive the Holy Spirit. I like where she says also that in his great love, Christ surrendered himself for us. He gave himself for us to meet the necessities of the striving struggling so we are to surrender ourselves to him when this surrender is entire i've marked the word entire that's it complete our surrender needs to be complete why so that christ can finish the work he began for us by the surrender of himself 
when he can bring us to when he can bring to us complete restoration. Review of Herod, uh, May 30, 1907, paragraph 4. Thank you, Sun Desire, for uh, elaborating and pulling out that writing from the spiritual prophecy to explain further about surrender and We can stop here. Time is up. And I just wondered, can we close with a hymn this morning? Unless somebody has got a bunny thought that they wanted to. They wanted to contribute, anyone? Okay, there's a song called Nothing Between My Soul and the Savior. I think this paragraph and your comments all has inspired this song. Shall we sing that song? Nothing Between My Soul and My Savior. Let us sing to close this. Nothing Between My Soul and My Savior. Three to two. Three to two. An SDA hymn of three to two. And it has it has three stanzas. Who would like to sing the first stanza, please? I'll take the first. Thank you, Sister Martha. And the second one, please. Who would like to sing the second stanza of Nothing what Between? What number my... again? Uh, three to two, Nothing yeah. Between. I'll take another one. Okay. And number three, stanza three. You can take that one. Thank you very much. We may start, please. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I've closed it. Mm -hmm. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. Not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine, there's nothing between. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing between. Nothing between like worldly pleasure. Habits of love, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever save he is my own, there's nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior, so that his blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing between. Nothing between and many hard trials. Though the whole world against me convene. <coughs> Watching with prayer. And much self denial. Triumph at last with nothing between. 
Nothing between my soul and the Saviour, so that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favour. Keep the way clear, there's nothing between. Amen. Amen. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. May this be our prayer that the Lord will give us the ability to make the right decisions that we may surrender all to Jesus and let nothing between our souls and the Savior. Okay. May I ask um, Tuckley Twins, please close for us with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for all these studies we can do each day where we can learn from each other. We thank you for the presence of thy Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that you'll change us, change us from what we are to what you want us to be. Be with us, keep us faithful, and we thank you for the blessings. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. I'm sure you have all found it worth, uh, worth it waking up after half night prayer to come and study the word. Uh, may God bless each and every one of you for that wonderful effort. And um, we shall continue the study tomorrow. We will leave it here today. Thank you once again, everyone. And may God give us desire to study his word that we may be uh, we may be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Okay, Alan and Linda kindly make the announcements, and that's as we are finished for today. At um, 12 o'clock, um, thank you, Sister Dorothy, for taking this lesson. At 12 o'clock, it will be midday prayer, and the speaker is Elder Devon Searchwell. And then at 6.30 song service and then we'll have another speaker for the week. Do we have a speaker, uh, Brother Desire, for the week? Yes, we'll give the details uh, in the midday. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank and then you. there's Kef and Lee. Kef and Lee, don't forget, all roads lead to Kef and Lee at, um, at the, the uh, 25th of March to the 31st. And the poster is out. Po well, it will be out, I think. It will be out, will it? Yeah. It yeah. will be out. Yeah. Okay. Shortly. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. God bless you. Amen. Until we meet again tomorrow morning by God's grace. Amen. Amen. Bye bye, everyone. Oh.